Welcome to the Spokane City Council Legislative Session for February 28th. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Council President Beggs? Here. Council Member Bingle? Here. Council Member Cathcart? Present. Council Member Kinnear? Present. Council Member Stratton? Here. Council Member Wilkerson? Present. Council Member Zapone? Here. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. All right. Welcome, everybody. And we're going to have two proclamations and then a report from the Grandview Thorpe neighborhood. We'll start out with a proclamation on support of women helping women. Councilmember Kinnear is going to read that, and she is going to be joined by Heather Hamlin afterwards. Councilmember Kinnear. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I just about forgot. So. Let me get it up. Here we go. Whereas the women and children of Spokane are the future with the potential to achieve the highest levels of education, thrive in their careers, set and reach their goals, and then empower future generations to continue these legacies. And whereas Spokane's population is approximately 51% female, ranging in age, diversity, and socio status, and whereas we should strive to provide equal opportunity and support all women in our community as they tap into their unlimited potential. Now, therefore, Nadine Woodward, Mayor of the City of Spokane, on behalf of the citizens of Spokane, do hereby proclaim March 1st through 8th, 2022, as Women Helping Women Week in Spokane, and encourage all residents to recognize support and celebrate the women of our community regardless of socioeconomic status, diversity, and age. And I'll turn it over to Heather for some comments. Thank you so much for the part. Oh. We Heather, we mute Heather. Heather, start. We can. You're on mute right now. So go ahead and unmute yourself. And there you go. Start over. Thanks. Oh. 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 Something's going on. All right. Well, go go ahead, Councilmember Wilkerson. If Heather's unable to speak, Heather, would you mind if I receive that proclamation as a past president of the Women Helping Women Fund? Yeah. Thank you so much for that. I'm not one of the original founding members, but pretty close to it. Uh, I think I joined that organization in year five. Truly a grassroots organization of women who came together because they saw a need. And look where it has grown today and the gaps that organization has filled in our city. Uh, I'm extremely proud of them, Heather, and to all the women who are still currently there in that leadership role. And I know that the organization will continue to do us good work working with women. Thank you. Thank you. We're looking forward to that. All right. Well, one of my favorite times of the year is getting ready for St. Patrick's Day. And so I'm going to read that proclamation. Um, whereas, once again, it's time to celebrate St. Patrick's Day and all that it means to the sons and daughters of the old sod and those that are Irish for a day. And whereas the city of Limerick, Ireland, has been a sister city to Spokane since 1990, showing the strong bonds of friendship between our two cities. And whereas St. Patrick's Day is also a time to celebrate our diversity and the richness of the Irish culture that blends with all the other ethnic cultures to enhance the fabric of our community, to make Spokane a place that is welcoming to all. And whereas this year, the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick will host the 42nd annual St. Patrick's Day Parade, which is our harbinger of spring and one of the largest Irish events of the West Coast at 12 p.m. on Saturday, March 12, 2022. Now, therefore, I, Brian Begg, Spokane City Council President, on behalf of the community members of Spokane, do hereby proclaim the week of March 5th through March 12th, 2022, as the week of the Irish in Spokane, 
and urge all community members to join in celebrating the St. Patrick's Day events taking place in our community. Thank you, and I don't, I don't see anyone from the group. They're usually here in the front row with Irish dancers, and I'm looking forward to having them back soon. Council Member Kinnear. So someday before we're done with council, we're gonna read that together. Okay. Um, so the two Irish kids can read the, the Irish Week proclamation together. All right, next year to date. Okay, then let us move to Grandview Thorpe neighborhood and Joy, and I'm not sure if I'm gonna pronounce your name correctly, Joy. I've, Sheik. <laughs> it's Sheik, just how it looks. Joy Sheik. Joy, yes. thanks so much for your many years of service to that neighborhood. And if you could go ahead and tell us what's going on in your neighborhood, aside from a lot of uh, house building. <laughs> well, we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to share a PowerPoint. I haven't used WebEx before, so I think I just click share. Oh, um, so we're making you a presenter, and then you can. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think I need to... Can you see it now? No. Mm. Not yet. Okay. Um. Sorry, my husband's trying to help me out here. <laughs> There, it's coming now. Yep, we got it. All right. Okay, so my name is Joy Sheik, and I've been the chair of the Grandview Thorpe Neighborhood Council for many years. Um, I've enjoyed leading our neighborhood council with the help of some of my fantastic neighbors. We've got Tina Lewerson, of course, our community assembly rep, Molly Marshall, our treasurer, and Dan Stoic, our cleanup coordinator. Um, we are proud of how much we've accomplished for this neighborhood, from new sidewalks to regular cleanup days to um, our annual free outdoor movie nights. Our neighborhood is unique because it has no commercial or public buildings within our boundaries. There is not much reason for anyone to enter our neighborhood unless they live here. Grandview Park is the heart of our neighborhood, and we love our little park. We hold our peanut days at the park and we have our meetings here during the warmer months. We enjoy easy access to our much loved trolley trail. Part of the trail was preserved years ago through the conservation futures, but the section of trail that could provide important connections to other trails is still owned by several different private owners. And this year we submitted to have this remaining trail section also preserved through conservation futures. They had many other important parcels in Spokane County to choose from, and unfortunately, the trolley trail did not make the top five on their list. However, it seems like we brought enough attention to the need to conserve this trail that the city of Spokane is now tentatively planning to make an administrative purchase of this land so that it would be maintained as part of the city's park system, is how I understand it. Um, the neighborhood truly appreciates any and all help from the city to make this trail conservation become reality. Other than our small park, it's the only public open space in our boundaries. And we owe a huge thank you to Molly Marshall for getting the Conservation Futures application put together on behalf of our neighborhood. Once preserved, this, link, this trail will link our neighborhood to the Fish Lake Trail, and then the Fish Lake Trail has its planned connection to the Santa Fe Bridge. So it would be incredible to eventually have a trail that goes all the way from the Assembly or Thorpe Road area in the Grandview neighborhood um, up to Kendall Yards and then onto the Centennial Trail would be amazing. So switching to traffic calming, the last project the neighborhood applied for through the old version of the traffic calming program was in 2018. Um, we asked for a sidewalk to be built on South Milton Street and that sidewalk was finally installed this year after a few COVID delays, I believe. Um, it's been wonderful to see it being used daily. In August, we held our outdoor annual movie night. This year, the movie was Harry and the Hendersons and about 75 neighbors attended. We plan to continue holding this event annually on the third Thursday of August. We were able to rent the inflatable screen through FunFlix thanks to a grant from the Community Assembly's Community Engagement Grant. 
Fun Clips makes it really easy, and we would highly recommend them for other neighborhoods looking to hold this type of event. Another thing we were able to purchase with funds from the Community Engagement Grant was a batch of magnets printed with our neighborhood's meeting times and other important city information. We pass these out at meetings and events, and they are always well received. In the fall, we were thrilled to once again offer a cleanup day for our area after not being able to have one for a year due to COVID. There was a bit of rain, but the event was still extremely well attended. And kudos to Dan Stoic, our cleanup coordinator, for helping to make this event happen. I'm pretty sure that he uh, missed a game he had wanted to watch that morning just so he could help us fill up the dumpsters. We ended up disposing of almost five tons of waste and three and a half tons of clean green um, material. We also distributed 87 disposal passes. People just loading the dumpsters and some helpers raking up the pine needles at the park. Um, we had the mobile speed feedback sign at a couple of locations over the year. It's always interesting to see the data that comes back from that. Um, this year, a couple of us from the Neighborhood Council were able to attend the Clifton Strengths Training offered by the Community Assembly's Building Stronger Neighborhoods Committee. It was worth the time to gain a little insight into our own strengths and how we might leverage those as it relates to our work on the Neighborhood Council. Mm -hmm. Andrew Thorpe would uh, really like to have some type of gateway signage, letting people know when they've entered our neighborhood. Tina Lurson had the great idea to have a mural painted on these ugly concrete walls um, just under the Fish Lake Trail overpass at 16th Avenue off of Highway 195. Like other sign options we looked at, this is still an expensive project quoted at about $32,000. We do have a professional mural artist, um, painter, mural painter in our neighborhood who's willing to do the work, but um, it does take money for power washing, paint and supplies, traffic control, scaffolding, and other costs. Tina has been working hard to find grant money to help us meet this goal. We have received a $3,000 grant from the Associated Garden Clubs of Spokane. We were denied from the Spokane Parks Foundation, and we are applying this year for a community grant from AARP and also possibly a grant from the Spokane Arts Foundation. Please let us know if you know of any other places where we might find money for this project. It will be so welcoming to see the mural each time you survive the intersection of 16th and 195. Plans are underway to make improvements to this intersection, but honestly, it's not enough and it's taken far too long. I say every year when I present to you that it will only be a matter of time before someone is killed here. Perhaps then it will move up on the Department of Transportation's priority list, like the Highway 2 intersection that Colbert Road recently did when there were two fatal accidents. The Grandview Thorpe Neighborhood Council strongly encourages and supports the goals of the Citizen Action for Leitaw Valley. We implore you to please put a moratorium on development in the Grandview Thorpe neighborhood and in the Leitaw Valley until real infrastructure improvements are made. Our area simply can't sustain more development until these and others are addressed. There are hundreds of more homes planned in our boundaries, and we don't even have a place to hold a neighborhood meeting during the winter months. We used to meet at the Canyon Bluffs Apartments Clubhouse, but they recently started charging more than our neighborhood could afford to use their space. Here is a list of planned new developments in the neighborhood that the neighborhood is aware of. 311 more homes. These are only in the developments. There are still a lot of single homes filling in vacant lots throughout the neighborhood as well. So you can see we're looking at a lot of developments, some larger than others, but it's really adding up and I think it's all hitting this year. Um, so in 2019, Grandview Thorpe had 461 single family homes. Just the developments planned for this year will increase the number of single family homes in our neighborhood by two thirds with no infrastructure improvements. Here you can see the rutted dirt road that is 18th Avenue. CDB Construction was able to build six new houses on the street last year and plans to build six more this year. They were not required to improve the street at all. They actually made it worse. Um, they blocked off the C Street access between 18th and 19th Avenues. And then you can also see 14th Avenue in our neighborhood, which has never been paved. There are also many new homes under construction on West Grandview Avenue. 
there is no sidewalk, and the roadway itself is in terrible condition. I haven't seen any plans for it to be improved, even though the planned Grandview addition will add 96 new homes with residents who will use this road daily. 16th Avenue is the main route in and out of our neighborhood that's used by most everyone. It's a long, windy hill with no real shoulder, striping, bike lanes, or sidewalks. We have plans to improve this road in our neighborhood action plan that was approved by City Council back in 2015. Now is your chance to require developers to make improvements before they build. This is just a little tidbit from a newspaper article last year. It turns out that Grandview Thorpe has um, one of the heaviest tree canopies in the city at about 40% of our land covered with tree canopy. And that's why neighbors are worried that a fire could come up the hillside and destroy homes in our neighborhood. With hundreds of more homes planned and only one road out, this situation is a train spark away from being a true disaster. Just another reason a building moratorium is needed until emergency service is, our emergency services infrastructure is in place. The Grandview Thorpe Neighborhood Council begs you to please put a moratorium on all new building in the Grandview Thorpe neighborhood until the needed infrastructure is in place. The city has the staffing levels needed to enforce development regulations with builders, and the Department of Transportation makes improvements to the scary intersections of Highway 195 at 16th and Highway 195 at I-90. That's all I had for you tonight. I just wanted to say thank you to the city council for listening to our neighborhood's um, whims and concerns. And I wanted to thank um, the Office of Neighborhood Services, Annika Eagle and Gabby Ryan in particular have been um, responsive and helpful whenever I've had questions. Uh, this year, we look forward to working with our newly assigned liaison, um, Cindy Ortiz. That's all I have for you. All right, Joy, thank you so much for that really helpful presentation and some excellent advocacy. Really appreciate that. If you stop sharing your screen, then I'll be able to see any council members that might have questions for you or comments. Um, Wish I knew how. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Any council members have questions or comments they want to volunteer? Uh, council member Kinnear. Joy, thank you. This was great. You guys are so well organized and really proactive about your neighborhood. I will tell you that Council Member Wilkerson and I have met with um, WashDOT, Mike Gribner. We met with some of the folks in Eagle Ridge and in your neighborhood about building, about infrastructure. We talked about a moratorium. Moratorium only lasts a year, six months to a year, so that's really not going to address your problems. The best thing we can do is to really get infrastructure going fairly quickly so that you all aren't stranded there with no place, no way to get out. And I would welcome some comments from Councilmember Wilkerson on this as well. Thank you, Councilmember Kinnear. Well, I will tell uh, Joy when I went to my first neighborhood council meeting down there, that was a new area for me. And since uh, going back on several occasions, it is challenging. Fire trucks, fire, traffic, and like Council Member Kinnear said, we have met with other parties, really joy, uh, trying to come together for a solution. So I just want your neighborhood to know that you are being heard. Thank you. And we are trying to bring all of our knowledge to bear uh, to help the neighborhood um, and, and smart growth. We know we need houses, but it needs to be smart. And to see that road, um, it's really disturbing. So I'm sorry about that. Anything else for Joy? All right, again, thanks for spending your time with us this evening, Joy, and all that you do for your neighborhood. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. To, I believe we're at boards and commissions appointments. Appointment of Maria H H Hernandez Peck to a three year term on the Spokane Human Rights Commission to serve from March 1, 2022 through December 31, 2025. All right, we got to spend some time with Maria today. Uh, all those in favor of appointing her to the Human Rights Commission indicate by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right. Maria is appointed. Thank you for your service. And if you are a community member within the city of Spokane who wants to serve on a board or commission, check out the web, web page on boards and commissions at the city's website. It has a list of all the committees and commissions, what they do, uh, vacancies that are there, and terms of office for people. You can see that they might be finishing up. And you can apply through the mayor's office uh, for just about all of them. Uh, and then after the mayor selects somebody, they, we interview them at council and make the formal appointments. Thanks for your service, everybody. All right, that brings us to a special budget ordinance. Ordinance C-36174, amending ordinance number C-36161, passed by the City Council December 13, 2021, and entitled, an ordinance adopting the annual budget of the City of Spokane for 2022, making appropriations to the various funds of the City of Spokane government for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2022, and providing it shall take effect immediately upon passage and declaring an emergency and appropriating funds in. City Street Fund, number one, increased revenue by $262,000, A, of the increased revenue, 262,000 is a contribution from the Spokane Transit Authority for the Gardner Avenue project. Two, increase appropriation by $3,980,000. A of the increased appropriation, $3,980,000 is provided solely for grind and overlay project costs in the street department. This action arises from the need to fund the business area grind and overlays project. Deferred from February 14, 2022 agenda. All right, is there in, or there's nobody signed up for public comment? Is there any council commentary? All right, seeing none, let's have a roll call. Council Member Stratton. Aye. Council Member Kinnear. Aye. Council Presidents and I, Council Member Cathcart. Aye. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. Councilmember Bingle. Aye. Councilmember Zapone. Aye. All right, that passes seven to zero. The emergency ordinance was tabled indefinitely while we wait for some further information from planning. Now we're on to resolutions. Resolution 2022-18, committing $500,000 in appropriate and available city funds for the redevelopment of the former Hilliard li Library into a new behavioral health clinic. All right, we don't have anyone who signed up on our website for this, but if, but there were some people who didn't mention what they were. So if any of the four of you that were, well, three of you on the phone that were interested in testifying in open forum, if for some reason you wanted to testify in favor of or opposed to this, hit star three. I'm assuming you won't, but I'm just, just in case. Um, all right, I'm not seeing anything, so let's move to council commentary. Council member Wilkerson and then council member Cathcart. Thank you. Even though there's no one signed up to speak tonight, we've had lots of uh, emails in support of this. Uh, it's creative, uh, innovative for that neighborhood, how they came together to support this, and so I'll be supporting it also. Council Member Kathka. Uh, thank you. I'm just uh, really glad to have this resolution before us tonight, and I think this is a really important project that's got a lot of community support. A lot of folks have come together from all different walks of life in Northeast Spokane to uh, try to help organize and, and support this. So I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Uh, grateful that for those watching that um, both the House and Senate capital budget drafts right now have uh, a portion of this funded in there and it's expected that that will, that will uh, remain in the final draft of the capital budget. And so I think, you know, us contributing this modest $500,000 um, relative to the overall project cost is a, a great investment for us. It's going to support a lot of Northeast families. You, uh, the proximity to Shaw is, is really helpful. Um, you know, there's around 86% of those that attend Shaw that are economically disadvantaged. And this mental health, uh, behavioral health center is going to be, you know, something that's going to really benefit uh, access for those folks. And so just really grateful that this has all come together. And uh, I really appreciate all the support from other council members. So thank you all. Anybody else? 
Um, okay. Yes, please. Council Member Bingo. Hey there. Yeah, I just want to, again, say thank you to all the, the council members who have supported this. This is, uh, you know, an issue where uh, it was great to see so many um, people involved and um, and unified on what was needed for the community. And I'm grateful that, again, Councilman Cathcart has been working so hard to make sure that this got done um, in a timely fashion, making sure that it was on, uh, you know, it was top of mind for everybody, uh, you know, as we were going through the ARPA process to get dollars there. Um, and uh, I'm just really excited of what this means for the Northeast. So thank you all for your support. All right. And I would just add that I was pleased to help co-sponsor this. It's a great idea. And one of the things I really appreciated is the community came together to identify uh, needs. Uh, we have this vacant library branch because we, uh, the voters gave us money to build a new one at Shaw Middle School. Uh, and so it's really exciting to have a whole complex. Uh, part of the original proposal was also to create space for, I would say, uh, newer uh, community groups that are, don't have enough money to rent space uh, in the Northeast area. And I did have the chance to talk with the senior leadership of MultiCare uh, last week, and they confirmed that they're open to using some of the space on the evenings and weekends for that purpose so that it could be a multi-use facility. They also confirmed, which I was, I was hoping, is that they are gonna pay fair market rent for the space since they're gonna be treating people with insurance and Medicaid dollars, so they'll be getting money for the rent in those reimbursements. And that gives us some flexibility on funding because we can probably do what we did um, at the East Central Dental Clinic uh, which was uh, the city advanced the money with a SIP loan and then used those rents to pay off the SIP loan, uh, which if that's possible, then would free up uh, other ARPA money that can be spent in that community or around the city. So I'm super excited by that and really kudos to the Northeast Community Center leadership um, and their board and Amber and Dave for all the great work that they've done on this. And it also sets, again, a good example for the East Central Library branch, I think, of what we could achieve. And so I'm looking forward to that as that process continues. So with that, let's have a roll call. Council Member Stratton. Aye. Council Member Kinnear. Aye. Council President tonight, Council Member Cathcart. Very strong aye. Council Member Wilkerson. Aye. Council Member Bingle. Aye. Council Member Zapone. Aye. All right. That passes seven to zero. Resolution 2022-19, reinstating the Sustainability Action Subcommittee under the City Council's Public Infrastructure, Environment, and Sustainability Committee. All right. Uh, well, we briefed this earlier today, and essentially the Sustainability Action Subcommittee has been in existence for almost three years, and they're just going into a new phase, and this clarifies the membership of the Executive Committee, I think we're calling it a Steering Committee, and voting procedures and some other things like that that should just formalize the process a little bit, but they're going to then get to work on uh, implementing the Sustainability Plan Council uh, passed uh, late last year and especially collaborating with the administration and other stakeholders in the community. Uh, there's no public comment requested. Is there any council commentary? All right, seeing none, we'll go to a roll call. Council Member Stratton. Aye. Council Member Kinnear. Aye. Council President Sinai, Council Member Cathcart. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. Councilmember Bingle. Aye. Councilmember Zapone. Aye. All right. That passes seven to zero. And next resolution, we substituted a version today, but go ahead and read the title, Ms. Fister. Resolution 2022-20, adopting the Clean Fuel Infrastructure Reserve Plan and establishing a reserve account. This resolution aligns with the Spokane Sustainability Action Plan goals by providing a clean electric 
fuel fund to support electrical charging infrastructure. All right, there's no public comment, but just as way of a headline, uh, the fleet department um, suggested this methodology for paying for future infrastructure that we will need for either electric or hydrogen powered vehicles. And instead of having big chunks of it come out of department budgets any one time, each department will pay a surcharge on their fuel that will still be less than it would cost if they bought it on the open market and the money will build up to pay for those as they work, including with grants from Avista, Department of Commerce, the federal government. So there's a lot of um, funding for this right now and I really commend our department for getting ahead of the curve so we can take advantage as early adopters. Uh, with that, any council commentary? Councilmember Cathcart. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, I guess my, my thought on this is that the, the way I would like to see us do this would simply just have a fund that uh, we would allocate dollars into out of the general fund for, for these costs rather than take it out of each department specifically, at least up front, because I, I just think we need to have an easier way of tracking the total cost and expense and things like that. Uh, maybe over time it would make more sense that it would come out of each department's budget, but especially now that it hasn't been planned for in the in our current budget, I just feel like creating a line item that would just come out of our general fund and, and that, that would, that's where we would pay for this would, um, would just make a little bit more sense to me. Any other commentary? All right. Hearing and seeing none, we'll have a roll call. Councilmember Stratton. Aye. Councilmember Kinnear. Aye. Council President Sinai. Councilmember Cathcart. Nay. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. Councilmember Bingle. Nay. Councilmember Zapone. Aye. All right. That passes five to two. And that brings us to um, uh, our one ordinance, regular ordinance tonight. Did you want to do the resolution that was added first or do that afterwards? Uh, we'll do that afterwards. Okay. Ordinance C36037, vacation of the alley between Columbia Avenue and Joseph Avenue from Julia Street to Myrtle Street as requested by Dan Cantu. All right. And there's no public comment requested. Any council commentary? All right. We'll have a roll call. Council Member Stratton. Aye. Council Member Kinnear. Aye. Council President Sinai. Council Member Cathcart. Aye. Council Member Wilkerson. Aye. Council Member Bingle. Aye. Council Member Zapone. Aye. All right. That passes seven to zero. And then. Um, Yes, we did add a resolution today, and Ms. Fister will read the title, but then because it has only been on file briefly, uh, Council Member Bingle is going to read the resolution for us. Okay. Resolution 2022-24, expressing support for Ukrainians and Russians living in Spokane and abroad and restating the city of Spokane's commitment to a diverse, inclusive community free of oppression for all, of, all its residents. All right. Council Member Bingle, if you'd like to read it for us. Yes, thank you. Whereas advancing inclusion and belonging for people of all races, national origins, and ethnicities is critical to guaranteeing the safety and security of all residents of Spokane, and whereas each of us has a personal responsibility to prevent the spread of misinformation, condemn violent acts in any form, support all fellow community members, and reject stigma, hate, and bias in all its forms. And whereas one of the goals of the City of Spokane's Joint Strategic Plan agreed to by the City Council and the Mayor is to create a compassionate community so that all people can feel safe, empowered, and welcome. And whereas the Spokane Municipal Code prohibits discrimination because of race, religion, creed, color, sex, national origin, marital status, familial status, domestic violence victim status, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, honorably discharged veteran, or military status, 
uh, refugee status, disability, the use of a guide dog or service animal, or the use of eligibility for the use of housing choice or other subsidy program or alternative source of income. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city, that the Spokane City Council states its unequivocal support for our Ukrainian neighbors in Spokane as they worry about the loss of life and property during the invasion of their native country and strongly urges everyone in Spokane to create and maintain a compassionate community every day by supporting both our Ukrainian and Russian neighbors so that all people in Spokane are safe and welcome here. All right. Thank you, Council Member. And thank you, Council Woman Kinnear and staff for working on this. Um, we don't have any community comment. Um, any Council commentary? Yes, I would, if I could real quick. Yes, go ahead, Councilmember Ringo. I just want to say I, I think the leadership of the city did a, did a great job in responding to what we saw around the world. I want to thank uh, the mayor for the proclamation that she put out um, in support of, of our U, uh, Ukrainian population. I want to thank Council President Beggs and Councilwoman Kinnear uh, for helping to draft up this resolution. Um, I want to thank uh, Ms. Karen Stratton and many many others that are on this uh, board that, uh, you know, as we were reaching out to that, um, to that community, that everybody here was very supportive. And I'm just, I'm glad that, uh, that we all did that. And I just, I, I appreciate how hard everybody here works to make sure that Spokane is a place that's safe and welcoming for all. So thank you all. Council Member Cathcart. Yeah, thank you. I would just just to add, you know, prayers for obviously our, our Ukrainian and and Russian community members. I know there's uh, a lot of folks that are that are struggling, suffering, and and dealing with with a lot that's uh, that's impacting them back at home. And so I just just prayers for them, and uh, really appreciate the, the community coming together and, and rallying um, to their aid. So I'll just leave it at that for tonight. But thanks for bringing this uh, uh, resolution forward. Thanks. Councilmember Wilkerson. And I'll just add for our own men and women in the armed services that are over there in support. Mm -hmm. Any other commentary? Um, um, and also, I just wanted to also acknowledge the Parks Department lit up um, the pavilion lights in, in support of the Ukrainian colors. So I thought that was special moment. All right, with that, let's have a roll call. Councilmember Stratton. Aye. Councilmember Kinnear. Aye. Council President Tanai. Councilmember Cathcart. Aye. Councilmember Wilkerson. Aye. Councilmember Bingle. Are you there, Councilmember Ringle? I know you're in favor of it. I'll go to Councilmember Zappone. Aye. All right. I'm sorry, aye. I'm okay. sorry. Thank, thank you. All right, seven to zero. Thank you. And we're just about to go to open forum. We have four people signed up. But before we do, I just wanted to take a moment to express my uh, personal appreciation for a reporter for The Spokesman who's uh, leaving uh, to go to work for Paper San Francisco, and that would be Adam Shanks. And I thought about doing a written formal salutation, but I thought that might hurt his credibility as a journalist. So I'm just gonna make an oral one so there's a limited record and just say, Adam, how much I appreciated um, your hard-hitting and hard-nosed coverage of the council and all the issues. You just, you grasped all the issues so quickly and gave all sides a fair shake and uh, I will miss that. I'm sure your replacement will be good, but it's hard to let go of all that you did for us. So we wish you the best going forward uh, in San Francisco where I grew up. I'm so excited to go down. My daughter's gonna be moving there soon to take a job, so I'll be checking up on you. And I see Councilmember Kinnear would like to say something as well. I gonna, I'm gonna echo all that. And I also wanna thank him for challenging us with his questions. He didn't spare anybody. He did not take sides. And he, sometimes he was absolutely ruthless. And I appreciate that. 
as a former journalist, I thought, this guy is good, and he's going to be going on to bigger and better things. And sure enough, San Francisco got him. I'm hoping, I hope he's making a great deal of money because he's going to need it to live there. Mm-hmm. And I know he does have an apartment, I'm told, um, not far from the beach. So he's going to have a good time. And so when we get ready to go on a trip, we should do a little field trip, all of us, and go down and visit him and um, sleep on his living room floor. All right. Okay, so we're to open forum. We have four people signed up. Uh, Bonnie Overly, Kim Cotlin, Deb McCurdy, and Alex Stein. And Bonnie, you're first on my list. If you want to hit st- star three, and just a reminder, if you haven't been at open forum before, um, that uh, you address your comments to me. We can't t- We can't take open forum testimony about something that was on the agenda today or is on the agenda next week. And I know a couple people are going to talk about ARPA, which is fine, but we do have a special budget ordinance with some very specific ARPA asks for next week, so uh, please don't reference those specific asks. You can still talk generally about ARPA. And um, you have up to three minutes, and I'm not going to... And so Bonnie has not not hit star three, so I'm going to ask Kim Kotlin to hit star three. All right. Kim, welcome to Spokane City Council. You have up to three minutes. Thank you. Um, Thank you for taking the time to um, let me speak. Um, My name is Kim Cotlin, and I am a member of the Spokane Alliance through Westminster Congregational United Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. I am also an ECAP Family Service Coordinator and a mother of two. Through my experience as a mother and a professional, I urge you to allocate ARPA funds to provide subsidies for families and compensation for the workforce in child care. When I began looking for child care 18 years ago, I knew what a quality child care center looked like because of my professional experience in ECAP. There was only one child care center near me and that I felt offered the quality program that they, uh, but they were extremely expensive. My family had no way of affording it, even with two incomes. When my first child was born, the only option for childcare we had was a friend's mother who commuted from Colbert three or four times a week. My parents, who worked full time, supported the remaining uh, time we needed for childcare. When we had our second child, the responsibility became too much for my friend's mother. I still couldn't afford the childcare program my children deserved. The cost of part-time child care was the same price as our mortgage. My husband and I made the really difficult decision to take out a home equity line of credit to pay for child care. We paid it off with, when my youngest child was in junior high about eight years later. You don't get a second chance at early childhood. It can set you up to be successful or it can set you up for a lifetime of challenge. I knew the importance of having a variety of learning tools to play with dedicated centers for exploring and creativity, and most importantly, support for healthy emotional and behavioral development. Uh, People have no idea how many challenging behaviors are solved before kids go to elementary school. Without high quality early learning experience, children may not learn the skills needed to get along with others, problem solve, and manage in a group setting. They may lack the ability to self-regulate their emotions, which disrupts their own learning and the learning of their classmates. In elementary school, students who haven't been taught to self-regulate may be seen a troublemaker and can, it, this can carry on into how they interact with school for the remainder of their life. Uh, you can see the impact when you consider that kids who are more, are more likely to go to college if they attended an early learning program. We can prevent so much pain and hardship for our entire community with high quality early learning. If we want quality, quality accessible uh, early learning programs for Spokane, we need to provide financial support to families and improve compensation for the workforce. We, the need is too great and too important to wait any longer. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kim, so much. 
And next, uh, Deb McCurdy, if you would like to hit star three. I'll try Bonnie Overly again. Bonnie, if you're there, or Deb, if you want to hit star three, either of you. Okay. All right. Yeah, I know. Who's this, please? I get it. Hello. Who's this? Hi, Deborah. All right. My De Curdy. Yes, Deborah. Thanks for joining us, uh, at City Council. You have thank up to, you. You have up to three minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, City Council members. My name is Deborah McCurdy, and I, along with my husband Bob, have been co-owners of Debbie's in-home daycare center in Spokane for 30 years now, and we average about 12 kids a day. Um, I'm here as a member of the Spokane Alliance, and I want to highlight the greatest needs I see within childcare. The COVID era has been an incredibly stressful time for the providers and our families. As a provider, I don't just take care of a child, I take care of the family. So when a family takes the financial hit, I take a financial hit also. Um, subsidies for families and direct support to the providers is absolutely essential if we want childcare businesses to stay open I'd like to share that I worked for a single mother and her child with autism who could only afford childcare through state subsidy. She wore duct tape shoes every day because she spent every cent she made on her child's care. I remember the day she received a 25 cent hourly raise at her work, which made her ineligible for childcare subsidy and unable to pay for her childcare. While I cared for this kid, this child and her, um, without charging them for two years because consistency for any child, let alone a child with autism, is essential for their health and their development. Because of this stability, I was able to provide for that family. The mother was able to receive a degree in social work and her child is healthy to this day and doing strong. I cared for another child as an infant whose mom started using math. Me and another parent at the center cared for the child every day and every night ourselves until the mother was able to provide for her child again three years later. 20 years later, this child arrived at the front door of my center and told me that she was not only pursuing medical school, but she was going to be a doctor. She said to me, you're the reason I am becoming a doctor. You always told me I could do anything regardless of the hardships of life. At that very moment, it revealed to me that the stability that one child can impact, that you can impact on one child can impact an entire community. Without financial support to providers and families, we will all suffer the consequences. My center has not raised prices within two years because our parents can't afford it, but the cost to run our business has become more expensive with inflation. We take financial hits from all directions because sending kids away, it doesn't make any sense. And when you realize the impact that the love and stability uh, that our centers and the providers provide to these children, um, our whole community will suffer if we send them away. It just doesn't make sense. So city council members, I urge you to use the ARPA funding to provide subsidies for families, direct support to workforce and mental health support to alleviate so much suffering among the providers and the families at this time. We need it more than ever. Thank you right. very much. Thank you, Deborah, and thanks for that inspiration as well. Um, next, we have Alex Stein, I believe, is on the video, so we're gonna promote him to be a panelist. Oh. All right. If whoever is on the phone, there's one person if you wanna hit star three. If someone's there, go ahead and speak up. Um, I just had, I had a text that Bonnie is in the waiting room. I don't know if Bonnie, if you've hit star three. She 
is hitting star three. Any? All right. Hmm. All right. Well, Bonnie, I don't know if you can hear me, or for some reason we're not. It's not working. The star three. We will get you on another meeting. Um, and I apologize for you having to wait through this whole meeting. And it, it didn't quite work, but we'll try to get at it. We're doing our best, but we don't have a another way to do it. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of our meeting. Thanks, everyone. Um, we had uh, four different meetings today. They were all spirited. I appreciate uh, the civility of all my council members and the, the debate and the issues of the day that people brought up. It's very helpful. Um, everyone, please take care of yourself, and if you can, take care of someone else. We are adjourned.